when we talk about giving uh, iron chelation agent, um, most of the patients now are started on the Ferrazirock, which is the oral formulation. There's two available uh, options. Uh, one is pills, which new, it's newer formulations. The other one is XJ and has been uh, used uh, for years now. Uh, most common side effects that we have with Deferazirox, which is the active molecule in uh, both of these uh, medications, are uh, basically uh, some gastrointestinal side effects. That's the first thing that we need to face, especially uh, with XJ some potential kidney issues, especially at the uh, beginning of uh, the treatment. Uh, also, liver function test abnormalities, uh, transaminitis are pretty common uh, because of the uh, formulation. But one of the things that we need to face on a common, uh, common day-to-day basis with this agent are to have and to find the good uh, levels and uh, the good dose of agents. Uh, it can be pretty complicated to find a good uh, balance between the side effect and um, the efficacy uh, to begin to get rid of the excess of iron. But with the new formulation of uh, the Ferrazirox, the Jet New, uh, potentially we can get rid of some of the gastrointestinal side effect of the uh, patient. And if we have a best, a better uh, toxicity profile, potentially we can give to the patient more uh, of the drug and potentially to have a better efficacy for this patient and to, to be able to reach the goals of treatment that we have that are basically based on ferritin levels. From the patient perspective, the question of the uh, liver function test abnormalities are maybe not the most uh, common concern. Uh, with the use of X-Jade, um, it was kind of complicated for the patient uh, and almost kind of ritual every morning uh, to dissolve the egg jade in a big glass, take the, uh, take the medication, while with the new medication that we have, the new formulation of Jad New, uh, it's much more convenient for the patient as we don't have all this uh, preparation and uh, almost ritual for a day-to-day basis. So it's much more convenient for the patient as compared to what we have uh, with egg jade in particular. In terms of quality of evidence, uh, regarding iron chelation therapy and MDS. Um, you know, of course we'd like to have data from randomized controlled, placebo-controlled trials. Uh, we'd like to have that for everything we do in medicine. Unfortunately, we do not yet have the results of the Telesto trial, which is, of course, the phase three randomized controlled trial, placebo-controlled, comparing deferacerox to placebo. That's expected within the next couple of years. Um, but I think that we have a lot of not only clinical indications, such as the transfusion independence, but also preclinical data that demonstrates that iron overload is deleterious and that reducing iron overload, whether it's with chelation or whether it's with phlebotomy in transfusion independent patients, is beneficial. And so and I also think that we need to keep in mind that we just don't have phase three clinical trial for everything we do in medicine. For example, it's only just now that randomized controlled trial data uh, for the use of erythropoiesis stimulating agents in MDS is becoming available. And yet, this has been the standard of care for many years in MDS. It's our impression that a lot of the issues with adherence with XJ, the dispersible formulation, uh, are related to GI intolerance. So uh, based on the experience of our US colleagues, and these data are early still, the adherence is better with the new formulation with Jade New. So at three months of chelation, adherence is improved to 70% from 60% with X-Jade. In terms of switching patients over to Jade New or starting them on Jade New uh, who haven't been on iron chelation therapy before, it's important to remember that pharmacokinetic data show that not as much of a dose of Jade New is required as X-Jade to achieve the same chelation effect. So when switching patients over, basically uh, it's recommended to lower the dose by 30%. Um, some of my colleagues have actually 
uh, recommended lowering the dose initially by 50%. And the reason for this is that with the dispersible formula with um, X-Jade, you can get a slurry in the bottom of the glass. And so maybe not all the X-Jade is actually being ingested. And so by decreasing by 50% to start with, then you won't run into sudden you know, surprises in terms of creatinine levels and so on.